All right, the tank shot. Yes. Yeah, tank shot. Yes, yes the tank shot. Um, the Peacekeeper tank. For those of you that are familiar with the manga, this is a scan, basically, um, of the manga. When we started to do this um, project, I did a lot of research, and these are my amazing little books, books, <laughs> books, <laughs> book notes or whatever. Um, but yeah, so here's the Peacekeeper tank, and if you're familiar with the manga, they, they're much more dominant. I don't even think they show show up in the uh the anime i think they're only a manga thing which is w another thing that was kind of special we were we really wanted to to tie in a lot of references from the manga i think more than ever um just because this again was even further away from being translated to cgi or even color so mm -hmm. I, I think this one actually was closer to the shot that we had in mind um and i think we really wanted to show like the degradation and the destruction of technology and that was really what we were after with this shot and yeah i think it here's the shot itself and we did a lot of different versions until we got here it's a really heavy mm -hmm. render too it takes a long time yes. all that work and it's only like 14 frames but yeah <laughs> yeah it was a, it was a lot and here's a little bit of a journey um from creation um, it's not really in order, so it's kind of all over the place. Actually, I'll start with an order. I'll just kind of organize it really quickly here. But started basically um, inside of Fusion. And for those of you who are like, why did you use Fusion? It's like, this because what I knew. So it's not that I knew, knew anything else at that time. So mm -hmm. I decided to model this in Fusion, which is kind of fun and really challenging. And also modeling something from drawings is really kind of complicated too because the, the the drawings would change. Like sometimes you'd have two mm. things here and sometimes three and yeah. nothing against uh, Otomo. It's like, I would look at this, you know, like this reference and then I would look at it here it would change a little bit. And then I was just trying to find a consistency to model from. Um, for the most part, it was stayed pretty consistent. It was pretty much on there. So I would just use all those references together and try to get a, a basis of what it needed to be and kind of, Mm -hmm. let it come all together and once i had the parts just kind of i decided to flip this and cut this into pieces then i would just kind of put them all together and that's what the tank looks like modeled um inside of and all put together inside of cinema 4d mm -hmm. um, this this shape is really complicated to make in fusion <laughs> to be honest I, I don't like it's very difficult to make this kind of shape yeah it's weird <laughs> Because this is a this is a CAD based program. It's primarily yes. made for making really great hard surface things. So, I really should have modeled this in inside of ZBrush or something. But I, I was determined, and I figured it out. <laughs> so, that's nice. People are rolling their eyes, I'm sure, but whatever. <laughs> you know, I think that's how we work, right? It's just trying to find a, a solution as best possible. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is a look at UVing or attempting to UV this crazy piece uh, right here. This is inside of a program called 3D Coat, and uh, I was learning 3D. I was learning how to texture and then destroying it in a quick, simple HDR, um, and just seeing kind of how it looks. Um, big thanks again to Raul Marx. This is a while ago. He was showing me how to to kind of get these things through and. This is a, I mean, 3D Coat's pretty incredible and you can do some really powerful stuff. This is a real simple texture that I made inside of um, 3D Coat that I then brought into Octane and Cinema 4D and kind of mm -hmm. translated everything over. Um, it does a pretty powerful job. Here's some texturing, some PBR texturing inside of um, 3D Coat um, and then bringing it back in. Yeah, it was. I was in like this crazy learning streak with this, and I was just yeah. You remember I was kind of going. Insane. Yeah, I was going insane a little bit. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was a good process, and it was cool to learn. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and yeah, it's it's a. I really need to get back into it. Actually, I, after I look at this, it's just how powerful and how incredible of a program it is. I just need to go a little bit slower, I think, with it and not take on so much. So, originally we we're gonna do this shot in blue. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, we decided to go with red again. So, but mm -hmm. putting some cables outside of it, and uh, we would kind of draw on things too, just to get the look of the lighting and where we wanted things to be. And it slowly just started coming along until it became, became the shot that you see now, which is, yeah, it's it's there. Yeah, there we go. There's the beast shot. We were gonna put Tetsuo in here. 
Um, but mm -hmm. I think it was going to be too distracting. So decided not to do it. So sorry, Raf. We had Raphael do a quick job. <laughs> so sorry. He has to join the, the club of not getting your shots in there. So yeah, <laughs> if we suffer, everybody suffers then. <laughs> but um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about how some of the texturing or anything about this shot that you um, just kind of collaborated on? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Uh, I think I I must did the the ground texture, right? I yeah. put a kind of mixture texture, and I I used uh, just the basic uh, diffuse texture, and I used a glossy texture, and uh, mix them together by using a a noise texture to to kind of separate the uh, the weight and the dry area of the of, of the ground. Yeah, it basically, it basically it's a very simple way to do that. But uh, but uh, but uh, then I found a tutorial on YouTube that uh, that can teach you do a very uh, nice way to texture. But uh, but but I did, it didn't apply to this shot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, it's good, man. I think it works out just fine. So. And it feels like dirt, but it also feels kind of interesting and, and weird and surreal with like the glossiness and certain parts as well, which is interesting. <laughs> That's kind of cool too. So, and the normal map too you yeah, have in here too, which is cool. Yeah, it's like weird snow tracks and stuff too. Al, yeah, and, and Cornelius is epic textures that he has as well. And mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think what's taking so long is the volume. Turn the volume off, and then it's like super fast. But look at how uh, it looks with that volume. The, <laughs> that, that's looking very, very, very rough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very flat, very flat. But with the volume, it makes it look awesome. So, and then it's for me, it's always like when I would do the volume or something, it was like okay, now it's a matter of like a little bit less density, a little bit more. Okay, change the volume <laughs> steps. Okay. Then go back and adjust the, um, you know, find out how much the size of the voxel editing. So it's it's just with the the volume. It's for me. It was always a matter of just testing it, finding what feels right, and then just kind of playing with it until it, until you get to a place where it feels like it, you see it in your head. Um, yeah, and there's no. I think for this one, there's no real like right or wrong, you know, it's just a matter mm -hmm. of getting it to where you want it. I think the volume <laughs> for me is like painting almost. It's just the same as oh. powerful as lighting, which is kind of cool, but it's also really hard to deal with. So <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, and just, I just reduce the density right there and then I'll probably, I would probably reduce the light a little bit, the power of the light. We're using an IES on this, which is cool too. It's more directional. So it creates an interesting fall off rather than just that, being like a general. So that's interesting. I never used this kind of thing before. Oh no! Yeah, I yes, yeah. I've used it on uh, quite a few of the shots too. Um, it creates a cool directional kind of lighting rather okay. than just like a straight flat lighting. So okay, yeah, they're awesome, and you just they're kind of like a generated image that produces mm -hmm. light and more naturally, basically. So nice. This actually looks a little better because it reduced some of the fog down so you could see some of the background elements and kind of it comes together a little bit better, slightly clearer. But mm -hmm. again, it's just a matter of tasting, texting, uh, testing it, and then it comes together. <laughs> so actually, too, when you reduce the fog density, it reduces the uh, the volume. It reduces it down to the render time. So, but yeah, this was a this is a fun shot. This is a. Mm -hmm a lot of programs put together into one and a lot of um a yeah. lot of me cursing in my office so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's yeah. really cool and then i think um in after effects what we did is we just kind of added in some post uh some post bits and did some denoiser to to reduce some of the noise and added in some smoke and stuff coming off of it and behind it so Simple stuff, nothing too crazy. It's a very fast shot too. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. you get a couple of shots maybe. Yeah. So <laughs> it's all there, but it's quite simple. So, but yeah, and there it is. It's a very noisy render too, as we had to do use denoise. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think we'd have to turn it up to like 8,000 samples and we're not using version four, which has the AI denoiser, which looks amazing. So yeah, I'll have to get that sometime, but there it is. There it is peeps. That's the tank shot. Yes. The beautiful, beautiful tank shot. Awesome. There's a Kaneda and my little epic <laughs> bookmarks, my little bookmark guys. So yeah. They are crazy. <laughs> yeah. They are, they are acting crazy. <laughs> I like his smile. It's great. <laughs> Fits perfectly with the mood of the page. So <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, uh, we're on to the next one guys. Yes. All right.